By electing John and the Reverend, you can make an immediate difference in your own lives, the lives of the people all across this country, because their election will put an end to the block in Washington that $2,000 stimulus check. That money that will go out the door immediately to help people who are in real trouble. Think about what it will mean to your lives. Putting food on the table, paid rent, paid funds your mortgage. Um, sure. Well, first, let's kick this off. Hi, I'm Beth. And I'm Sadie. And, and you're, you're listening, listening to, to Mixed Politics. Mixed Politics! <laughs> <laughs> Episode three. <laughs> Stady. I tried to steal it. I know. It's all Stady. right. Stanley, what are we drinking tonight? I'm drinking regular old tried and true rum and coke. Just regular. <laughs> Nothing special. You just pour the rum in it, pour the Coca-Cola <laughs> in it, and go. You know why? Because for the most part, it's just been a regular week. Yeah, pretty much. It's, you know? Yeah. Which I'm I'm totally cool with because it's like, finally, Jesus Christ. I know. Jesus like, like, what did Joe Biden do Wednesday? I don't know. Oh, uh, shit, he bombed Syria. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to be honest, I haven't watched much of the news this week, so that comes that as is... a surprise. <laughs> we bombed I'm, somebody. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry I laughed at that. That is so tasteless. I'm, okay. Well, yeah, no, well we I, bombed sites that yes. were involved with Iran and Syria, whatever. I guess. But, yeah, so, which, which, you know what? To be honest is regular ass American shit. We bomb people. I think We've been that's... bombing people since I was born. Like I've grown up and to an adult with America bombing people. So cheers yeah. to regular ass American <laughs> politics of killing black and brown people for natural resources. <laughs> what are you drinking? I am actually drinking rum and Zevia, which is pretty much like rum and coke but it's the sugar-free version so wow yeah and we crossed, didn't plan you've this crossed over huh <laughs> you've crossed over to the rum side what do you mean i've crossed over you pretend like i've never <laughs> drank before what the hell's wrong with you no I, I didn't i didn't know that rum was your thing or one of your things i don't drink very much but for this podcast i kind of have to so i just am going to just whatever i can think sounds good <laughs> Man, it kind of have to. I mean, they kind of have to on multiple levels. It's like, all right, we're talking about politics, which yeah. most of the time is terrible. So it's like, why yeah. not drink? Got to get why a not? little bit Just... buzzed for this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. But it's funny. We didn't arrange this ahead of time, what we were drinking. So it, the fact that we both reach for rum and soda-ish stuff is a little bit... Mm -hmm. That's why we're friends, man. <laughs> but you have, a, you have a nice shirt going on. What's going yeah. on with the shirt? So this is... Uh, a YouTuber called Madzy. He has merch that I just got in my mailbox yesterday. And so it says, you're moving mad. And he's from the United Kingdom. So he's got a little accent when he says this phrase, but he makes YouTube videos, a reaction channel type thing. Oh. So he, so he, he watches videos, reacts to them and often will say, you're moving mad because things, you know, things just get out oh, of control. That that's so hilarious because like yeah. when you said uk i immediately pictured his accent in my head i was like you're moving mad bruv yeah. it's mad it's mad thing mad thing going on out there bruv there you go <laughs> there you go that's madzy so yeah he's got a youtube channel he's really fun to watch so anyways right. got some merch. i'll be sure i'm i'm gonna check him out yeah and so what actually he was commenting on some of our youtube videos so he's been watching since episode zero so thanks madzy all right you got a shirt on with an emblem that is something that's a shout out we're too, not, huh we're, we're not gonna talk about that those who know know and we'll just leave it at that so it's a shout Let, out you, you know, know what you know, you know what I'll, I'll give them i'll give them i'll give them one little sound bite blood and thunder loktar wow <laughs> you're like you're sitting there you're sitting there like what kind of what kind of nerd shit did he just say <laughs> I will leave it to you and your buds. <laughs> All right. What are we talking about tonight? Okay. Beth? We are talking about House Resolution 1319, which is the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, also known as the Coronavirus Release or Relief Act, um, also known as the COVID bill. It's got a lot of names. Mm. And the reason we're talking about this because, yeah, it is really super boring and nerdy. I think it's really important that people remember 
politicians take advantage of us if we don't know enough to call their bullshit and they they spew bullshit all day every day so if you don't know what's really in this bill and if you're just relying on the news media to tell you you're missing a lot of detail so we're going to try to provide some context around some of these things and see if we can help you out to know who's doing your right and who's doing your wrong but you, here's the thing. You just call it nerdy and like super boring. I don't think people find $1,400 to $2,000 super boring. At least that part, most people know what uh, is True. going on or should be going on. Because that's, you know. However, that's, that's... <laughs> that's assuming this bill passes the Senate. Because there are, yeah. uh, what, 50 senators on the Republican side that are probably going to vote against this bill. So, yeah, I, I, we're all psyched about the, Why the COVID would relief. They? Why would they? Why would they? Why would they vote against it when it's bipartisan in the House? No, not a single Republican voted for it in the House. Are you serious? I'm serious. Not a single Republican. Ooh, mm -hmm. that sounds like a death sentence for a bill. Exactly. So that's why when you say everybody's excited about the fourteen hundred, yeah, absolutely. But that's assuming it passes. <laughs> what happens if it doesn't pass? Well, we need our listeners yeah. to really be informed about what it is they're missing. And why it is that their politicians are not voting in their interests and not actually passing legislation that helps them. They, they all have their motives, and we're going to talk about some of them tonight. All right. So you're, they, people are calling this the COVID relief bill. Why, why is that significant to you, Beth? Why is that an issue? Well, it's significant because in true fashion of Kevin McCarthy, he is, by labeling it the COVID bill, that allows him to say that all of the stuff that's not directly related to the virus or the vaccine is just pet projects of the liberals. Now, this is an economic relief package because our whole economy was impacted by this virus. So he is exploiting mm -hmm. a, a political opportunity to misinform people and make them think that 91% of this is throwaway. But there's stuff in here that's really important because, the, yes, there is money for PPE and vaccines, but this virus is not fully going to go away. So yes, we need to have that kind of stuff, but it also includes $50 million for consumer protections. How many new products mm. have we seen come into the market that are related to, oh, you need this mask because it's the most safe and you need this ventilator because it's the most safe, but it turns out it's all bullshit because they're exploiting the pandemic. $50 million for consumer protections to make sure that stuff coming into our country meets our, our current consumer protection laws. That's a, it's a really important thing. And so basically Kevin mm -hmm. McCarthy is saying that that's not necessary. If it's not related to the vaccine or getting schools reopened, it's all shit and we just need to throw it away. So he's saying that he doesn't think it's important to protect consumers from being exploited. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a congressman from North Carolina. His last name is Bud, um, mm -hmm. uh, Ted Bud. And he was one of the people who were saying that only 9% of this bill is actually going to COVID. And then he actually, this is, a, I'll just quote him. He says, there's about 9% of it actually going to COVID, meaning 91% of it is not even COVID related. And I just want to let our listeners know that every fact checking source, PolitiFact, Snopes, whatever you want to prefer, or choose whatever, label that as false, categorically false, misleading or whatever. Why are they doing this? Because it's easy to manipulate people who just don't have the knowledge, which is why this podcast exists. We want to inform people um, because, yes, I understand a lot of people don't take the time to read a 500 page bill. Nerds like me will do that because like you did. Didn't you do that? I today did. Or I was, yes, I was reading it this weekend because that's how I operate. Look back at any of the major political events that have happened the last couple of years and people are confused about which side to fall on because media is left-leaning, right-leaning. I go for primary sources. So I don't want somebody to tell me what's in this bill. I want to read it with my own eyes. And yes, that means yeah. I don't get to sit and watch Netflix for a couple hours because I'm reading this bill. But it means that I know exactly what's in it. And no, nobody mm -hmm. is misinforming me about what's in it. I'm reading it. And it's, it's hard to understand sometimes. But yeah. if I have a specific provision that I'm confused about, then I can Google what does this mean and I can maybe get a little bit of assistance, but then I go back and read it again to make sure that it makes sense to me. 
the talking points that a lot of conservatives on you know on the other side of this bill now that i've learned here just like a lot of our listeners that no one in the house on the conservative or republican side voted for the bill nope. and senators are calling it you know only nine percent for covid or whatever i went and did my research and like actual research not like your facebook friends tell you go and do <laughs> your research which turns into like some youtube video of some conspiracy theories that's right. not what i did <laughs> Um, so when I did my research, I broke down this bill into three parts. Part one, coronavirus containment. And then mm -hmm. part two, things that are tightly or even loosely related to the pandemic. And then three, things that shouldn't even be considered at all. Has nothing to do with COVID, nothing to do whatever. Yes. When senators, uh, congressmen, I'm sorry, like, like Ted Budd or I think Mitch McConnell even echoed the same sentiment that only... 1% of this is for COVID or 9% of this is for COVID. It's like, this, it's not true because the direct stimulus payments, which which will be about $420 billion, um, it, that plan would extend unemployment benefits. Mm -hmm. It would offer financial aid for schools to reopen. Mm -hmm. And like all of those things are COVID related. Those, those things would go under the category of COVID related because the reason why things took a downturn was because of COVID. That's not, you know, hard. So when you're looking at the second category, COVID related, you have those kinds of things. 130 billion would go towards helping schools reopen safely. Mm -hmm. It's like that doesn't go necessarily towards vaccines or vaccine distribution or vaccine uh, R&D, re research and development, et cetera. But they're going towards things that have been affected by covid so mm -hmm. what they're what what the people who are against this are using their talking points to attack is that only a small percentage of it is exactly covid related which would be like the covid containment part part one um depending on how covid containment is measured the cost from experts are looking at 100 billion to 160 billion mm -hmm. uh the committee for responsible federal budget uh is look is is putting this at about six percent of the bill the same group put vaccine related activities in a sec in a separate group costing about 17 billion so less than one percent of the bill or about one percent of the bill is going directly to vaccines vaccine procurement uh research and development things right. of that nature distribution but and, it's like yeah yeah but it's like that's not the only thing that COVID, that this COVID relief bill is helping towards people that's been affected by COVID. Right. They use percentages to make numbers look really small, but then they use actual numbers to make things look really, really big. <laughs> and a lot of people don't realize that they play on your 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 brain's understanding of numbers. Yes. If I say something is one percent, it's just like, oh, that's nothing. But yep. What is 1% of 1.9 trillion? Right. It's going to be a huge Jesus. number. Jesus Christ. It's so so when he gets when he gets up there and he's like only 1% of this bill and it's like, "Bruh, that's a fuck ton of billions. That's what are you a lot. What are you talking about? That's yes. a lot of money." This is the manipulation tactic that they use because of people not being informed and not thinking critically about something like that. Also, isn't yeah. it interesting how the money that was uh, that was set aside for schools to reopen, it's trying to make sure that classrooms can be socially distanced and each classroom is going to need something different. So state by state, it'll be a different need and then county by county, a different need. But the part that Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy were so upset about was that they said there's nothing in the bill that de that mandates a time for exactly when the schools will be open. So the the people who are the, the leading time is their problem, right? The people who are leading the party of states' rights is actually wanting to mandate for on behalf of states when they need to open. So really, they're federalists. Don't let them fool you to say that they're states' rights. They are federalists all the way when it behooves them. They're wanting mm -hmm. to actually force states to reopen, which some states like North Dakota 
might be able to reopen now because the population density is not the same as it would be for New York City. But at a federal level to, to say schools need to reopen on April 1st, that is a horrible thing. But that's what they're saying is the reason that they're not supporting this bill. It's funny that you pick North Dakota. Like North Dakota and South Dakota are li- ridiculous for their COVID cases. Well, because the reason that was sticking apparently in my mind. They is, don't believe. Yeah, yeah. The reason that was sticking in my mind is because I, I I caught a little bit of the CPAC this weekend, which is a whole shit show. We're not going to talk about. But the governor of South Dakota, I believe it was, gave a speech. Oh, he was up and there. And she she said that she didn't close the schools. The schools decided on their own that they were going to stay open this whole time. And more power to you. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. That's your right as a state to determine what you want to do. But she was saying that she was better than New York and better than Los Angeles because she stayed open the whole time. Bitch, you're different that, from North, from Los Angeles and New York City. That is exa- the, This is why I don't the understand. Funny part is, the funny part is per capita. Per capita, like percentage of your population that's suffering from this is higher than New York. Right. And and so I think it's because talk? they I think it's because they stayed open. But again, they're they're making a decision to say because it worked for me, which it didn't, but she mm-hmm. is saying because it worked for me, everybody else needs to do what I do. That's not a state's rights approach at all. That is a federalist approach yeah. that mandates that everybody is dictated by who sits in Washington. And I'm sorry, I'm not buying into that whatsoever. Mm. Every state should be able to decide how they're going to use the appropriated funds, what their school systems need, if and when they can reopen safely. It should not be mandated by the top. So we got we've got the one percent that Mitch McConnell and like Ted Budd have talked about or whatever. Mm-hmm. The Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget reported that $246 billion would go towards extending unemployment benefits through August mm-hmm. and raising the federal supplement payment, a move that would account for roughly 13% of the budget of this bill. Mm-hmm. The Congressional Budget Office also said that the proposed unemployment benefits would cost $246 billion. The employment benefits combined with a $400 a week supplement to state unemployed insurance payments would cost a combined $350 billion. So when you look at that all together, you have that 13% plus the 1% that they're talking about for actual uh, inoculation of mm-hmm. the vaccine. This is another 7%, $130 billion that would go towards helping schools reopen safely. Uh-huh. So it's it's not honest. It's not true mm-hmm. when they say, one percent of the bill or nine percent of the bill is for X, and then the other ninety to ninety nine percent we're gonna build like amusement parks. Right, and that's what, what the they f- make it sound I, like. They actually what yeah. uh, what what was the, one of them was wearing a button that says uh, Pelosi payoffs or something like that. That's what they're calling it because they know it's it gets a, a an emotional reaction from people. And I'll tell wow. you, here's some of the things that are in the let's just use their numbers. If they say nine percent is for directly for COVID, the 91% Mm. is trash. Let's talk about what's in that 91%. Mental health services, aid for farmers. uh, Especially aid for farmers. That's a massive part. Yes, it's a huge part. What was it? Uh, I think I wrote the number down at one point, but I think I have it. It's the first section of the bill, Title I, Committee on Agriculture, Food Mm -hmm. Supply and Chain, Agriculture Academic Response, There's funding for USDA Office of Inspector General for oversight of the COVID-19 related programs. There's farm loan assistance for socially disadvantaged farmers and ranchers, assistance and support for socially disadvantaged farmers, ranchers, forest landowners, and operators. So let me ask Mitch McConnell or- I I remember looking at this bill when you you sent me the link Uh and like I was looking at the table of contents. There's Mm -hmm. like a whole like 19 parts that's just agriculture. Yes. It's the first section of the bill is just agriculture. And and I'm like, why would you disenfranchise the people who are voting for you by lying to them and telling them, you know, this isn't for COVID, but like a third of the bill is for farmers and agriculture. It's like, and and, and so so... they listen to this and just vote against their own interests. They do because they hear Pelosi payoffs and that to them is more emotionally triggering than the fact that the, these farmers are included in mm. the 91% that they're saying is trash. So I, I wish these, these cowards, I see I'm getting all fired up about this because I'm sorry, I come from a family of farmers for generations. We had farmers in our family, my grandparents, my great grandparents, yeah. my great, great grand, they were fucking farmers. And for 
for these people, the leaders of the Republican Party to essentially say that farmers are trash, it angers me mm-hmm. so much. The whole first part of the yeah. bill is called the Committee on Agriculture. But then they're just like, that's not for COVID. Right. And it's 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 Democrats' wish list. And it's like, if people would just honestly open the graphic that they're probably looking at now, if you're uh-huh. watching on YouTube, and see that, hey, there's a whole section of this bill that's for me, you know, a yeah. farmer. Uh-huh. Oh and and a lot of this, so four uh, four billion dollars is the first section for the the food supply mm-hmm. chain. What that is supposed to to do is to ensure that that farmers have the capabilities and the means that they need to get their food through the food supply chain and get it to families in need. So this is not just about the farmers that are giving their crops to into the food mm-hmm. supply chain, but also those on the receiving end of it, the people who are waiting for their stimulus checks that are held up in Congress right now because Republicans say that this is all trash and they're not yeah. offering solutions either. That's the, that's the part that really angers me beyond just how they're saying that the 91% doesn't matter because it does, but also they're not offering any solutions. They're just saying that they're, they're going to vote. No, they're not offering any compromise, any like, okay. So they'd say that $4 billion isn't what they want for the farmers. Well, then what do you want? Could you do 1.5 billion? Could you do something? Uh, yeah. the, the fact is they don't want to get engaged in the policy discussion because they know that it will expose the fact that they're not actually doing anything to help these people. It seems like it's um, par for the course or just definitely on brand for the conservatives or Republicans to do this. It's the same argument. It sounds very similar to we're going to repeal and replace Obamacare. Yes. Remember, that was the argument in 2016. And to this very day, we have not seen like not even like a web page. Not, nope. I'm not even saying a bill, just a web page that says this is what we plan to do to replace. Nothing. It Nothing. does it doesn't exist. Now, to be fair though, there are a lot of things in the bill. Well, not a lot. A, a number of things in the bill that aren't COVID related. Um, the CRFB proposed alternative plans costing 1.3 million trillion, sorry, and 1.1 trillion. So they're saying that if we took out a lot of these things that are not necessarily related to COVID, we could cut down the bill from 1.9 to 1.1 or 1.3 trillion. Mm -hmm. And we'd still get the same stimulus checks. The farmers would still get all the money that they needed, all the, you know, loss of uh, work and, and unemployment benefits and whatever would still all go out. But that's just how American lawmaking has been for mm-hmm. since since I was born. Oh, it's yeah. like you have a you have a bill, like you have a meat packaging bill, and for some reason, like four hundred tanks for the military is included in that. Yeah. And you're like, what, what, what the fuck? How did you lump that in? And so what would happen is it's almost like a tripwire because what happens is you have a couple of senators that would actually read the whole bill and go. What the fuck is this? What is what is this? What is what are these? What is this cost for the tanks? That's not a part of, you know, food packaging or whatever. And then they go, no, I'm not signing on to this until they remove that part. Right. And then now they go on record as I voted no for the bill. But I vote. But but no one ever gets into voted no for the bill. Why? Because the bill had some fucking latched on dumb shit for no reason. And I don't want to be a part of that. Like. That's how it's minimum wage got raised the last time in 2009. It was attached to a defense bill. Wow. That's, yep. that's the kind of shit that upsets me. It's like, they yeah. really do think that everybody here is stupid. Like, why can't the yeah. bill be about what the, the bill is about? Right. And just leave it at that. Right. Why do we all have to latch on all of these things? Um, that's how we buy votes. Let's... It's it's like it's it's bribery, really. Like this the mm. what's this section seven zero zero four Great Lakes St. Lawrence Seaway Development Corporation operations and maintenance. That yeah. is p- part of the that's one point five million dollars for mm-hmm. the Seaway International Bridge. Why is that in there? I have no idea. It doesn't say why it's in there. It just says it's in there. That's that's There's frustrating. There's also a part. There's also a part in there for extending like a railroad from like San Diego somewhere in California. And like, yeah. it's a couple of billion dollars. And it's just like, 
what is the what the fuck does that have to do with the covid you guys exactly. are making the bill bad by like trying to just tuck things in there instead of just making it a separate bill mm-hmm. and you know it's 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 been like this for a while and it's extremely frustrating <laughs> So what? So what's your beef with the name of this bill? Is that the same uh, feelings you have? Is that it's named something different than what it actually is, which is confusing? Or how do you feel about it? I think it's I think it's trickery. Um, you know where I'm from, we would call this politrix. This is like it's like everybody politrix. knows what politrix is. I like yeah, that. it's politrix. It's politrix. Not just the naming of the bill, but the nicknaming of the bill. Yeah. And that's a, it's a completely American phenomenon to me, which is, is absolutely crazy because it's like, right, let me give you a few examples. The Affordable Care Act. Everybody know. No, no, no. Not everybody. People with sense know this as. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? People with sense know this as Obamacare because they are exactly the same yeah. bill. It's just there's a nickname for the bill. Like, why does the bill have a fucking nickname? It's so weird to me. And I'm sure we've all seen the videos of people being interviewed on the streets of New York. And it was just like, hey, what's the difference between the Obamacare bill or act and the Affordable Care Act? And people are just like, well, the the ACA is what they fixed after Obama fucked it up. And it's like, <laughs> no, no, or no, a specific no, it's, question no, to it's say, not. would you support the Affordable Care Act? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Would you support Obamacare? No, 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 no. <laughs> right. And it's like it's like and the thing about it is they don't understand that politicians do this. And it's 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 mostly a conservative um tactic where it's it's known as confirmation bias. Yes. And it's it's and they just use the nicknaming of stuff to sway opinions on things. And like the definition, the dictionary definition of confirmation bias is the tendency to interpret new evidence as confirmation of one's existing beliefs or theories. So if you think that everything that Obama has done is bad, then naming something Obamacare immediately means it's bad. Yeah. And now you're confirmed. Scott Walker was trying to union bust like all of Wisconsin and he got funded by the Koch brothers and whatever. And so they came up with the right to work act. And a majority of America was just like, Oh, we should support this because this gives us the right to work. That was the nickname of the bill. That wasn't even the name of the bill. And people voted for this in droves. And what the bill actually meant was that, the company that you're working for holds the right for you to work here. Uh huh. And they could fire Not you at y- any time. And then, and then, and then the laws came where states became at will. Yes. Where it's like we could fire you at any time for any reason for anything, and you can't do anything about it. Pack your shit and go. Bye. Exactly. And by the time people figured it out, it was already passed. Yeah. Because you because one confirmation bias and two. You didn't read the fucking bill. You didn't read right. the bill. And that's your fault. You that, didn't this read the is, fucking bill. This is where people have to have priorities and they have to, you get out of this what you put into it. So I mentioned earlier yeah. that I spent this weekend reading this bill. It's 490 some pages or 590 Whoa. something pages. Now I did a lot of skimming because some of these parts I'm already familiar with because they're extensions of the prior bill, which I had already read. Mm-hmm. But I said that I had to, you know, I'm not going to watch Netflix this weekend. I still was able to balance a little bit of Netflix time, but I have to choose which one is more important to me to be informed or to watch Netflix. Right. And so people have to, I hear people say all the time, Oh, I don't have time to read that. You do. You're just choosing not to. (laughs) They choose not to. It's, it's, it's so frustrating to me. And there's so many different examples of this. It's the same thing with the bill that we're discussing right now. It is like, you you've you've rattled off a number of names that it's been called mm-hmm. but the actual legal name of this bill quote american rescue plan act of 2021 mm-hmm. end of quote that's what it's so, actually called yes the real name of this bill is the budget reconciliation bill number blah 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 of whatever because this wouldn't be the first budget reconciliation bill right that's yeah, the there's, truth. There's a budget reconciliation bill every year. And this is something yeah. this is something else that Kevin McCarthy was able to manipulate is he said 
Well, another reason I don't support this bill is because most of it's not going to be spent until next year. Yeah, that's how reconciliation bills work because they're for the f- Every time. they're for the fiscal year, which starts in October. <laughs> so yeah, you, he knows this. He knows this, but he knows mm-hmm. that most of the people who are watching television don't know, don't this. know this. So he yep. can emotionally manipulate them to get them angry about a non-issue. Mm-hmm. Well, let me just let me just say this. The truth is the money mm-hmm. will be spent earlier than October. It's just not appropriated until October. So essentially yeah. people are going to be, you know, the government's going to be borrowing future money to distribute it now, but it's not going to be appropriated and actually paid for until October 1st. So he is so- just... Mm. I wish somebody would just stand up on the Senate floor and go, hey, man, you keep calling this thing the COVID relief bill. And the actual name of the bill is the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. That involves a whole lot more Mm -hmm. than coronavirus. Exactly. That's that's what this whole thing is about is it this so is supposed shut to be the fuck up with that th- this one is, time this is how they get away with manipulating the the mm-hmm. press the the people watching and, and and this happens on both sides it's just that yeah. the republican party are more experts at it than the democratic party they both they're, they're they so both are good. guilty of this but jesus the republicans are so good at it they do it all the time yeah it's, it's like, let's call this thing the COVID bill and then throw darts at it the entire time. Mm-hmm. And then people will be like, yeah, this isn't a real COVID bill. And it's like, bro, it, it's, that's not the name. It's Where did you even get that from? Yeah, That's not the name. It's the American Rescue Plan. We're yeah. rescuing the country. So here's, here's the problem with it, though. If they attacked a rescue bill, then it wouldn't be popular. Exactly. Because it's like, hey, man, these people are trying to rescue us. And you, you, you say it, no. Exactly. That, that'd be like coming out as... It an, wouldn't work. An, it's like anti-Superman. Well, everybody loves Superman. Why are you attacking him? <laughs> <laughs> now, I will say that Thomas Jefferson actually wrote to a friend of his in 1789 talking about why it's important for the American people mm-hmm. to be educated and informed. I'm going to quote him. He said, wherever the people are well informed, they can be trusted with their own government. That whenever things get so far wrong as to attract their notice they may be relied on to set them to rights. And in, in modern speak, that is, if people are informed, they'll know when to call bullshit on their representatives. And then the American people will start picking up the phone, writing the letters and say, <laughs> and say okay, you can't do this. I, this is not what I want. You can't do it. And part of what Joe Biden ran on was bipartisanship. People are kind of misconstruing that and mm. thinking that because he's trying to get this COVID bill passed with without any Republican support that he's going back on his word. But he was running on bipartisan. He's running on bipartisanship, not just for the 535 people sitting in the House and Senate. He's talking about bipartisanship amongst the American people. And the majority of American people want this. It's true. So it's not just the, I mean, who gives a crap about these people that are sitting in Congress? They're in a bubble. They're in Washington, D.C. They're not at all aware of what's mm-hmm. going on in normal America. So this is about bipartisanship for the American people. And we want this. Can we agree to not call this the COVID relief bill anymore? Mm-hmm. Can we call it, can we call it exactly, or maybe, maybe even shorten it, but the American rescue plan. Yeah. That, the American that's the name rescue of it. plan. That, yeah. It's written right there. Let's do it. American so, rescue plan. Yeah. Let, it's called the American res- rescue plan. Mm-hmm. You were mentioning to me earlier, um, before we started, that Mitch McConnell had a had a response, or a, or the GOP had a response to this this whole bill, and you know how mm-hmm. is it how is it that he is so ready to say no to this? So the quote from him, he's talking about Joe Biden. He said, "Having chosen the progressive route." He certainly made it a lot easier for me to unify my members in opposition. So he's saying that without offering any solution to this, without offering any compromise or any counter plans or whatever, counter offers, he's saying it's dead on arrival because this is a progressive bill. So let me just say- He's it, noted for that. God, he's so, he's, yes. that's, that's his thing. Didn't they, isn't his nickname like the Grim Reaper of the Bill Grim Reaper. Some shit? He is known for just killing anything that's not pro-GOP. <laughs> so if mental health wow. services 
aid for farmers and money to help schools reopen safely is progressive, mm. sign me the hell up. Okay. Why? Sounds like a good deal to me. Yes. And, and I don't care if they'd label that progressive or not. It's about the details of what's in the bill. And the fact that they've used progressive as a derogatory term, Teddy Roosevelt, who is one of their heroes, the Republican heroes, he was a progressive. He was not like the modern day conservatives where they're trying to preserve some time in the 1950s for everybody. I, I don't know. But there, he was a progressive conservative. So he would actually say, let's conserve the national parks. Let's actually break up these huge corporations. He was very progressive. And that's now become a derogatory term. Yeah, sure. Can I add to that? Eisenhower was progressive. Yes, he was. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Let me let me take you way back. Way back. Let me take you back to the to the crib. Lincoln was progressive. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Lincoln was was so far left. So far left. He used to like this is straight up real. I'm not making this up. You can Google this, check it or whatever you want. Abraham Lincoln used to trade letters with a person by the name of Karl Marx. Stop it. Really? Um, you didn't notice? I didn't, didn't notice. notice. Oh, it's recorded. About maybe Hold six on. or seven letters were exchanged back and forth. Like, yeah. Because remember, Lincoln freed the slaves. Yeah. Does that sound like a conservative thing to you? It's it, traditionally not. Because a conservative... No, like, because conservative means to keep the way that it was before. To maintain. Basically, to maintain. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, I, I listen, I, I don't want to go on record to act like... Karl Marx and Abraham Lincoln were like BFFs or whatever, yep. but they were definitely pen pals. Yes. No, there were letters between That's them. That's interesting. I've never heard that before. Oh, wow. You're going to have to go look this I, up now. I will. It's I definitely awesome. will. So the, th the main point is, because I don't want to make this sound like we're bashing conservatives. I have a lot of conservative friends and I respect them because they are the true definition of conservatives, which is that they, mm -hmm. they don't necessarily think that it's, that it's within their space to push an agenda onto people that may not align with that agenda. So traditionally conservatives are like, let's just, you know, everybody to themselves, more libertarian, I guess, is what my friends are. They're more libertarian. Just say, let's keep the government out of people's lives. I can respect that because they are traditionally conservative. The modern conservative movement in the GOP does not represent that. They are merely anti-progress. That's what progressive mm -hmm. really means is that you're progressing in ways that you possibly can that can be um, yeah. deemed as beneficial for the American people. But because the modern conservative GOP wing is anti-progressive, in essence, what Mitch McConnell is saying is it's better to let Americans suffer and starve than for him to compromise with Democrats. And that, to me, Dude, is disgusting. That guy, that guy doesn't even know what the word compromise means. It's his it way or the fucking highway. He doesn't give a shit, dude. Yeah, and he keeps getting reelected. I don't understand it. And you know what? I'll say I will say that that Andrew Cuomo is in this same camp mm. right here. He keeps getting elected. And what has that man done for his for his state? Not a damn thing. He has really messed things up. So I'm going to be an equal opportunity uh yeah, person here when it comes to being critical. People are so polarized. But the Democrats are not as hardened with their polar polarization as the conservatives are. Because, like, mm. Democrats will do things like, you know, what happened with, um, what's his name? Al Franken. Al Franken, yeah. In the Me Too movement. They were just like, hey, man, you, you touched the girl's boob or you pretended to touch the girl's boob. So you got to resign. And he was just like. He got canceled. Go. You're, you're right. And then and then the conservatives are just like, hey, Trump, you said you, you fucking grab bitches by the pussy and you just walk up to them and kiss them? Hey, man. Hey, some bitches like that. Mm -hmm. And they just roll with it. They, they just like, it. they double down, you know? Yeah. And but, but the Democrats are just like, you look tasty, so we're going to eat our own. So here's some ketchup. Right. And we're, <laughs> and we're just going to gobble you down. It's destructive and that's on the both difference. sides. Yes, it's destructive on yeah, both but, sides. But it's, it, I think it's destructive on both sides, but it's not as destructive for conservatives because, like, they don't, they don't lose. See, see, we sit down and we ready, we're ready to play this game of political chess. And then when the Democrats start to 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 lose, they're just like, you know, turn over the queen, 
you win. I'm, you know, I lose. But like when the conservatives start to lose, they're just like, fuck this, flip the table. (laughs) (laughs) But this is how, going back to the American Relief Plan, is that this is how the Republicans are able to to take the Mm -hmm. stance of we're just not going to do anything because there's never been any consequence for them to have done nothing. Mitch McConnell keeps getting reelected, even though look at his state. And I think that they're last in education. The, the the most recent I heard was that they were the last in education. So that's, wait, they, wait, they, they beat Alabama. I think so. Last I heard, I'll have to check again, but last I'd heard it, they were dead. There's a, there's a lot of cousin aunties or auntie daddies. Never mind. We will finish the job of getting a total of $2,000 in cash relief to people who need it the most. The $600 already appropriated is simply not enough. Joe Biden, when he was campaigning for Warnock and Ossoff before the runoff in Georgia, said the words, $2,000 checks would go out the door if Georgia came through for these two uh, candidates that were running for the Senate. And they did. And, you know, as you heard at the top of the show, the soundbite where he was saying, you know, $2,000 checks are going to go out the door. Mm -hmm. Ten days later, ten days later, before inauguration, he wasn't even president yet, he immediately switched to um, $1,400 added to the 600 that was, you know, sent out by the previous administration. So my question to you, Beth, is do you think Joe Biden lied to the people in Georgia and people in America regarding the plans for this stimmy, stimulus check? What uh, people call it stimmy. The stimmy. Stimmy. Well, well, do you think Joe Biden lied about the stimmy? Yes. Going into his presidency? Yes. He, yes, okay. he did. Absolutely. What do you think? Oh, I'm for sure he lied. I got the video. I got the evidence. <laughs> and, I, and that's the thing. Like people, have, people attack me online, whether it's on Facebook or whatever, and they're just like, "You don't understand math. It's 1,400 plus the 600 from before." I'm like, "Why do you think that the Trump administration and the Biden administration were in cahoots such that their numbers <laughs> added up to equal?" <laughs> No. Does, and, that make, does that make sense to you? Well, Why it, would it you would say have, these things? It would have made sense 20 years ago if, if it was between the transition between <laughs> the Clinton and the Bush administration. They would have not had any qualms about saying, yeah, 600 of it was from Clinton mm. and then the other 1,400 was from Bush and together it's 2,000 because there wasn't this disdain for the other party. There was some of it, but not like we have today. So it's almost yeah. like you get disowned by your family if you say that you that you support anything that the other administration did. So there's no way that Joe Biden would be like, yeah, 600 was from Trump. No, no, not at all. So yes, he did, it's, he did it's lie. So, it's so crazy to me because like, I, I listened to it and it's, I don't know. I don't know why, why he would change the number. Like, no matter what, no matter what side you're on, whether you're Republican or Democrat or Independent Green Party or whatever, if I told you last week, I'm going to give you $2,000, you'd be happy about that. Free money. Well, it's not really free because it's, it's coming free. from our taxes. And it's like, yeah. finally, we're getting bailed out where the bankers have been bailed out, the auto industry have been bailed out, the agricultural industry have been bailed out. And it's like, finally, the citizens are getting fucking bailed it's out. It's our because turn. Of the <laughs> and, and like, not only that, like half a million people had to die yes. before we get to this point to talk about and it still isn't out. passed yet, by the way. It's still not passed. Yeah, it's still not passed. It's, it's, as a matter of fact, it's not even on the Senate floor. We're talking about it like it's a thing. It's not even the thing. It it's might not, not even thing. get there. Right. But, you know, it's like it's like while he was campaigning, he said $2,000, and I quote, $2,000 checks would go out the door. And then mm-hmm. 10 days later, standing with the backdrop of the office of the vice, uh, sorry, office of the president-elect, mm-hmm. he says you know, $1,400 to total $2,000. And I was just like, bruh, this is politics. Yes, it is. This is politics. You got what you wanted. You got Georgia to turn blue. You got, or you know, Ossoff and Warnock in. And then all yeah. of a sudden, 
that right. he got what he wanted from from the voters. And that's just par for the course with politics. That's the way it's been for so many years. The Democrats have yeah. depended on the black vote to to get anywhere, but then they don't really appreciate Georgia, what the black yeah. as fuck. Yes. And they don't really uh, properly appreciate what the black voters have done to get them in office. And it's really sad. And I really, really, really hope that mm-hmm. right now, with all these bills that are being proposed to put restrictions on, um, you know, to make sure that people have to have voter ID or to close yeah. polling locations, all this legislation that's trying to make it harder for people to vote, start today. Start going to get, let's just, let's just go abide by whatever stupid rules they want to put into place for who has to vote mm-hmm. or for what you have to have in order to vote. Do it. Prepare yourself now. Go. If you need a ride, start calling people. Get yourself to the BMV. Get your ID yeah. because these, it's really destructive when people just become complacent about politics because mm-hmm. we end up with terrible candidates like Joe Biden. Now, I will say, that um, not a single person that I know that voted for Joe Biden actually likes Joe Biden. Nobody. We don't like him. Uh, dude, I don't I don't like him for exactly what the fuck we're talking about. Yes. We just he he said 2000 and then 10 days later he said 1400. And it's like, okay, listen. Now that you're president, we can pass student loan debt relief, we can push Medicare for all, we can push you know, X, Y, Z. And he's like, he's like those people on fucking pawn shop wars or like the fucking comic book t- TV series where you come in there with an expensive ass piece of shit. And he goes, mm, I see med- I see Medicare for all. I see student loan debt relief. I see $2,000 stimulus checks. Best I can do is bombing Syria. <laughs> right. So true. Take it, take it or leave it. So true. Best I can do. Now, like, maybe bro, there is what the fuck? <laughs> maybe there's something in the intelligence that we don't have access to that he knew that made it a, a higher priority than everything else. I don't know. I don't know. But that's the thing. We don't mm. know. We're never told anything. That's why we have to elect good people in in the House and the Senate and in the presidency to actually put us first. We we are the people that they're supposed to be working mm. for. And I'll tell you how out of touch these politicians are. My, my, I think the biggest gripe that I've had about all of these relief bills that have been passed since the beginning of the coronavirus is that the, the worthiness of whether somebody should or should not get one of these stimulus checks in their hands is based on their tax returns. And the GOP alternate to this bill, the alternative that they had proposed weeks and weeks ago said that they wanted to target the stimulus checks to the most poor. That was, that was their words, the most poor. Well, how do they know who the most poor people are if they're basing this on tax returns? So the first stimulus checks that went out last year sometime, they were basing that on your adjusted gross income for your 2018 tax returns. It was 2020. Mm -hmm. We were in a global pandemic. And they were using tax returns from two years prior to determine what your yeah. income level was. How messed up is that? They're not. They're because so like out of touch that they don't even two know. Two years ago, two years ago, I could be working for a Fortune 500 company as a VP and shit. And then the pandemic hit, and I've got furloughed. I lost my job. I got fired. Yeah. Whatever. And it's like, how can you use that? No, yes, God. exactly. So if somebody was making. One hundred fifty thousand dollars in twenty eighteen, and then they got they furloughed. Didn't get, uh, they, they didn't got, get a stimulus check. They didn't get a stimulus check because they made too much fucking money two years ago. How fucked up is that? And that's what each iteration of this relief package has had in it is mm-hmm. it's based on tax returns from a at least you know April of the year before. And I that's crazy. I keep man. thinking about I I feel so incredibly lucky that. I still have my job today. I'm so, and I am not going to overlook that fact. I am so lucky to still have my job. But there are people that I work with in, in my income bracket, not just necessarily for my company, but companies like mine. They've lost mm-hmm. their job, but they were making enough income last year or the year before that they today won't qualify for this $1,400 if it gets passed because they made too much fucking money last year. 
and that's what last, these politicians, last year or last year or two or two years ago it would be last year if they have already filed their taxes or it'd be two years ago if they have not and how much can change even in a year how much can change you in can a, even take a, a pay cut a, by going a to a different job yeah something can change in a month so all of this work that the politicians I, are I doing, have friends i have friends that i know that were working fine pre-Thanksgiving yes. and are currently unemployed. Exactly. And based on how much they made last year, they may not get a stimulus check now. Yeah. And yeah. that's just not right. So these politicians are, they call it working hard. I don't see where they get that definition because they're basically just sitting on television all day long, yelling at each other through the media, not actually yeah, compromising yeah. with one another. Meanwhile, they can't even take five minutes to talk to Americans like us to ask us how we think this is this should be done. Because if I had five minutes with a politician, I would immediately tell them the way that you're determining who gets the check is completely bunk. It's completely ridiculous. Five minutes, yeah. I'd be like, don't even do this. Give it to everybody. So what if you give it to somebody who makes $500,000 a year? Ask who them doesn't to, deserve it? Who doesn't like, deserve dude, it? We, yes. we 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 all pay taxes. Just shut the fuck up and send the check out, yo. Why right. are you doing this? They're they're really they're determining the winners and the losers without ever having looked at the data. And it, it, Wait it, it, a second. Yeah. Whoa. What? Determining winners and losers from a government standpoint isn't that communism? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> right. Because yes. that's what communism is. When the <laughs> government gets to the... Hey, you know, it's so funny. Like, I really wish people would have taken the courses or even just, like, research, like, actual... Because, you know, yeah. when the government gets to determine the winners and the losers, that is honestly... I mean, it's not the full definition of communism, but it's it's right in there. Jesus Christ. It's, it's the same spirit of that. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. All right. Well, we got a lot more drinking to do. We got a lot more talking to do. Um, if you do want to see this conversation continue or, you know, other topics that are tangential or based on this uh, conversation, then you can definitely sign up for our Patreon where you can sponsor us and you can get extended footage, bonus footage, bloopers, the footage that's going to happen an hour from now where we're fucking <laughs> 10 sheets to the wind. And it's just... You know, I might even take my shirt off. <laughs> I might. <laughs> no, I won't. I won't. But all of that exists. If um you go to patreon.com slash mixed politics, you can sponsor us at various different levels. There's stuff that we give back to you. You give back to us. It's a, it's a commensalism, I think, from my college days. I think that's what it's called when you benefit and we benefit. I don't know, maybe. But if you do want to reach out to us outside of going through Patreon and sponsoring us, Beth has all of that information for you. We have Facebook and Instagram at Mixed.Politics. We are also on Twitter at MixedPolitics1. On YouTube, if you search Mixed Politics, two words, you can find us there. Or you can just send us an email with any questions or any <laughs> opining that you'd like to do at MixedPoliticsPod at gmail.com. Everything that we have uh, linked here will be in the show notes. Everything's linked on Patreon. So there's, you know, definitely mm -hmm. a good place that you can find everything linked for you. And we admonish you, we implore you, whenever there's an important bill that's on the floor of the Senate or has just passed the House that involves some aspect of your life, just go to the government websites. They're, they end with .gov. So you yes. know it's real. Yes. Find the bill. There's a PDF format. There's a Word document. There's yes. whatever. Download Searchable. the bill and read it. Don't just take what the politicians nickname the bill and tell you what it is. Yes, because you know, oh, it's, I'll, I'll tell it's you a little secret. Bill or the, I'll yeah. tell you a little secret. Politicians lie. <laughs> That's a secret. <laughs> to some people, it is. They trust politicians way too much. Uh, but I All will right. do everybody a solid. I will link up the the PDF for this bill on all of our social media. So regardless of how you're finding our information, you'll see a link there where you can go directly to it. It's searchable. Do, do control F, search for keywords, find your favorite parts. But yeah. Yeah. 
there's a lot in there for you and there's a lot in there that ain't for you yeah but you won't know until you read it that's right so, so go read it so go read it so all of our analysts pundits and experts we thank you for joining us today we will see you next time for episode four of mixed politics <laughs> and cheers you glass? Yep. let's do it ah uh. <laughs>